So hello and welcome back to another coin video. So today we're looking at ancient and medieval coins. So what is the difference between ancient and medieval? Well the top two coins are what we call the Byzantine Empire. But obviously they didn't call themselves that. They just called themselves Roman Empire. So all these are Roman coins. It's just currently we divide the period into uh, Roman and Byzantine. And that's when Justinian, roughly about 500, took over power. I think it was a bit earlier. Uh, and he reformed the actual currency. So we have these uh, quite small coins. Actually, no, they're not quite small. They are pretty much like 10 cent size coins. And the other coins down below are two different coins. So these are Roman. So the earliest coin that we have here is one of Philip the Arab. So this is a coin of Antioch, which is currently in Syria. And here we have Tai Chi with a lamb reaping, uh, jumping over the top. Yeah, not surprised, look at her, she's got a gate on the top of her. The lamb's just trying to escape. And while I can't read the Greek, so you're saying, shouldn't it be in Latin? Because it's a Roman coin. Well, this would be classed as a Roman provincial coin. So in the east, in the Greek areas, not only that, there's some Roman areas, and also Spain for a time period, in North Africa, uh, individual cities were allowed to issue their own coins. Most of them are in base metal. But I think Antioch was allowed to issue silver coins as well, because uh, the, the Senate in Rome uh, issued the silver coins. And, but most of the provincial coins are in base metal, either copper, brass, or bronze. And this one is a, about, about a 30 millimeter coin. It's quite big. If you compare it to the 50 cent coin, it's, yeah, so it's pretty much 30, 31, 32 millimeters. I'm not going to measure it because I'm too lazy. And it's quite round. So it's pretty normal for a Roman coin. And on this side we have an effigy of Philip the Arab. And I did write down the inscription. So that's what it actually uh, says. So I think that's Antioch is the name. And this is the time period that these were issued. 244 to 249. So it's about 1,800 years. And these ones they probably cost about 40 or 50 dollars it's not in that good a condition uh, so it seems to have been in circulation for quite a long time i think the average circulating coin circulate for about 30 years in the roman times currently well obviously you can get a lot of old coins in australia that are, are based uh 1966 so that's uh, over 50 years ago so that's a nice coin the next one i have is a coin of constantius ii so i need to take it out so we can actually see that's why i don't put stables in the bottom of it and it's got a phoenix it's called a follis so this is from after the reforms of constantine in uh 305 i believe it was And Constantius, P.F. Augustus. And here we have the coin, which is quite nice. So, this is the standard design they use in the 3 and the 400s. So, the time period. So, unlike the coin of about 50 years earlier, uh, this one's more based on... Uh, current characteristics so it's not really stylized they tried to get the impression of the emperor uh, quite distinct but these ones all the different emperors they look pretty much the same so it's all stylized and he has a diadem at the top and the cape whatever they call it but this is why i purchased this coin because it has a bird or what do they call it a, a phoenix 
yeah different than the Chinese Phoenix which is quite a slender bird this is more like a crow and here we have the mint mark so that's a mint down there and we have the inscription going around so this coin is probably worth about a hundred dollars just based on this design uh, because it's actually quite nice the third coin we have is byzantine and it has two x's it means 10 numus so you've got two x's so it's 20 numus so this is half a follis and the follis either has four x's or one m so this is an m on the actual coin and this one is uh from Fucus who reigned from 602 to 610 and on the back we have the head of the actual emperor uh, with his name around so that's all that says and this one looks like it might have been overstruck on another follis because it has an x there which if we look at coins on wild winds so wild winds is a good website if you want to uh, look up coins so so a lot of the styles of these coins are actually quite yeah they're quite bad so the fact that this one's been cut so it's probably just the way the plant has been made so you can see all these coins are actually not really round they're just lumps of metal that have just been cut so while i'm not too sure on the inscription it's probably in two tall nika with uh, uh standing facing holding a long cross or staff surmounted by chiro and he has a globe with a cross on top so basically what we're looking at is it's hard to see so you should have a globe somewhere with a cross on top actually no which uh, i can't see but this coin, uh, which is probably a copy of uh, Constantius II, but this coin here is what they term an Arab Byzantine coin. So it's just a copy of a, a, a Byzantine coin issued in Syria and also in current Lebanon. So, so this side we have Constantius and we have the staff with a chi row here we have the globe with a cross and here's the actual emperor standing there so it has inscriptions on the side but because they are this coin is pretty crude uh, a lot of these are hard to tell what's actually inscribed on them and this one's probably overstruck on another coin although i can't tell which one it is so these by Arab Byzantine, they're called Arab Byzantines because they were issued by the uh, Umayyad. I think they were Umayyad or Abiyad. You know, I think the Umayyads actually issued them around the six, seven hundreds before they issued their own coins. And they were meant to fulfill the current economic needs of the time period in Syria. So that's quite a nice coin. First time we've got an Arab Byzantine, and the first time we've got a half numus. So this one's probably about twenty to thirty dollars as well. Although uh, that's just the prices I've seen them sold for. These prices do change over quite a long time period. So I hope this helps you with your Roman coins. So just remember these two are Byzantine, these are Roman, and these are different currency systems. So we have the provincial coins we have this second roman reform and this is the first byzantine reform anyway i'd say thank you and have an awesome coin to make that collecting time thank you and goodbye